What's up guys? This board, this paddle looking, surfboard looking thing here might look familiar to some of you if you follow me on Instagram. But yeah, this is an interesting build. So what I have here is my attempt to make an electric surfboard with the emphasis on attempt. This was a very challenging project. I've been working on this project for over a year. What inspired me to do this was I watched a video by RC Life on and he made uh, his own electric surfboard from scratch. And yeah, he said, don't do this. And I have to agree with him, don't do this. I spent over a year working on this. Stick around to the end of the video to see how I make out if I can actually ride this thing. Yeah, this was uh, challenging. So please, please give this video a thumbs up. All right, let's cue the build montage. Just so you can see how ridiculous this was to build. As if scratch building an electric surfboard isn't difficult enough, I figured why not design and 3D print the jet pumps as well for an added challenge. To do this, the jet pumps were modeled in Fusion 360. I had limited experience in 3D modeling, but this was a fun challenge and I learned a new skill that has since become super useful. The jet pumps are sized to fit a 54 millimeter impeller, which I also 3D modeled. I estimate I spent probably over 80 hours learning and modeling the pumps. Here you can see a cross section of the jet pump. It's pretty darn cool looking if you ask me. Printing the jet pumps was a challenge all in itself. I printed them all on my Anycubic Mega S and Ender 3 using PLA with an infill of 100%. Here are just some of my test prints and prototypes. Yeah, there's a lot, and this is only just some of them, as I said. Here you can see the initial test in my bathtub. Surprisingly, no leaks. And for a hobby grade 3D printer, I was super impressed with the tolerances. I was contemplating how to make a watertight engine box and tried welding up an aluminum box, but it turned out to be too heavy, uh, but it was very robust but I'll talk a little bit more about this box later. Again, here's me in the bathtub giving it a test run. I'll go over briefly how the pumps are assembled and if you want a more in-depth build, I can create a separate video. Let me know in the comments. I've released the files for the pump on Thingiverse so you can print and use them for your own projects if you like. This here is an eight millimeter oil seal that I'm tapping in place. I packed the oil seal with some grease. The bearings I used are high quality skateboard bearings. They're standard and very common, measuring eight millimeters by 22 millimeters by seven millimeters. Next, the second oil seal was installed. This made for a super watertight seal. On top of the bearing assembly, I capped it with a retaining plate that was screwed into some four millimeter hot melt thread inserts. Also, these brass hot melt inserts are used on the rear flange to allow the pump to be mounted. They're installed using a soldering iron. This part is called the diffuser or nozzle and had a bearing and oil seal installed as well. Here I'm going to machine a 16 millimeter brass hexagonal insert that will transfer the power from the eight millimeter shaft to the impeller. I also created a version of the impeller that can be used without this insert if you don't have a lathe. But the way I'm doing it here is just more robust. I drill out a hole for the shaft and taper down the nose of the insert. I also drill out two holes and tap them to fit two set screws that will hold it in place on the shaft. I don't have any footage of that, but here you can see it on the insert. For the shaft, I'm using eight millimeter stainless steel rods. I grind and then file down a spot so the set screws can mate up against the shaft, allowing the transfer of rotational power from the motors. I also add a retaining collar to keep the impeller from sliding off. Yep, lots of engineering to scratch build a jet pump for sure. For the surfboard itself, I built it from styrofoam. I glued a few sheets together using latex paint, then clamped the sheets together using some ratchet straps. Using a hot wire cutter, I removed the excess foam using some wooden templates giving me a rough shape for the board. 
For the outline of the surfboard, I made it wider and thicker than a normal surfboard for stability. In hindsight, I should have made it not as wide, but I'll talk about that later. Here is the motor box that I built earlier. It's watertight and super durable, but way too heavy. Because if you look here, this would have been really great. Would have been really cool. And then have that like that. But nope, she's a little too heavy. Instead of the aluminum motor box, I built one from plywood. I use a piece of G10 as the transom as it's thin, flat, and rigid. I give the box a layer of fiberglass and epoxy to strengthen the bottom. Here I'm marking out the holes for the pumps and drilling out the mounting holes. A quick run with a jigsaw, I get the holes cut out. And then now I remove the foam from the board and install the wooden motor box using some Gorilla Glue and activate it with some water. I have lots of experience building surfboards, so this was the easy part of the build. I trace out some rail bands on the board to help guide me in shaping the rails of the board. I remove the foam using a power planer. Then sand and blend the foam so it's all nice and smooth looking. Then I install a handle and some fin boxes which I'm not sure is necessary, but at least they're there if I want them. Here I'm also installing a vent plug because EPS foam does need to be vented. A coat of sealer was put on the board to prevent the epoxy resin from absorbing into the foam when I go to fiberglass the board later. I give it a quick paint job and then move on to fiberglassing the surfboard. I'm going to use a combination of epoxy and 6 ounce fiberglass cloth. Here I'm measuring out some epoxy uh, using scales because that's the best way to measure epoxy. And then I start glassing the board. I won't go into real in-depth to do this, but here I'm just wrapping the rails and boom. The bottom and the top are both laminated. Next I apply a layer of epoxy resin on top of the fiberglass to give it a nice seal coat. Typically after this step I would sand the surfboard to give it a nice even finish but it's a lot of work and the shop gets super dusty so I didn't bother on this board but I may sand it later when I'm sanding another surfboard so it looks a little bumpy compared to my other surfboards. Mounting the jet pumps is simple. Using some gasket maker I add a couple of beads to the flanges of the pump and diffuser and then seat them in place. Lightly tightening down the four millimeter bolts to the hot melt thread inserts on the flange of the pumps. On the intake flange of the pump, I tightened down some brackets I 3D printed. To power the jet pumps, I'm using these beefy six pole 420 kV brushless electric motors that have a water cooling sleeve mounted onto them. These things are crazy powerful. I mount them in place using 3D printed parts and then using an 8mm coupler to transfer the power from one shaft to the other.
To match the beefy motor is this massive speed controller. Look at the size of this hobby grade drone speed controller in comparison. Same with the motor. This drone motor looks tiny in comparison. Here I'm just tapping a hole for the water cooling barb. These brass barbs transfer water into the motor box to water cool the motors and speed controllers. I plumb up the system, connect the electronics, and it's time for some testing. The batteries that I'm using to power the system are these 9 amp hour DeWalt FlexVolt batteries. I made some battery clips and added on a voltage gauge so I can monitor the system. I'm running the system at 60 volts which is exactly what these DeWalt batteries can supply. To control the throttle, I picked up this waterproof wireless skateboard controller. It works perfectly and is nice and compact. For 3D printed pumps, these jet pumps work pretty darn good. No leaks and the electrical system seems to be running all nice and cool. For the waterproof cover, I 3D printed off some mounting clips and made the cover from plywood and added in some Lexan windows so I could keep an eye on what was going on in the motor box. Also, I added a Gore-Tex vent to vent the engine box. Bone dry. Wires are cool. The final item I added was a kill switch. Should something happen, I could kill the system when the box was closed. What are you doing? Prepping. Prepping. Are you gonna wear a wetsuit? No. Why not? But it's can it's Canada. It's October. Did you bring a towel? Okay. I feel I feel some of this is not well thought out or planned out, but anyway. So how long is this in the making? A year. <laughs> a year. I feel dramatic music should be being played right now. So you're going to head out for about five or six uh, kilometers or so. Will you be back for supper? <laughs> Will you grab some takeout?
cycling super fast. <laughs> but he's moving. I'm stoked at how fun this was to ride and eventually I'm going to try to surf a wave with it in the ocean too. Having now finished the project, the things I would change is I would make the board a little bit more narrow. It's a bit too wide and it takes a lot of power to get it up on a plane, but hey, I did manage to stay dry when I had it out. Also I would put in some higher KV motors or I would make the jet pumps slightly larger. I measured the amps I was pulling and I could definitely push the system a lot harder. For now, I'm going to park this project and I might even come back and revisit it at a later time. Also, these jet pumps would make an awesome RC jet boat, so I think I'm going to put that on the to-do list. So if you guys do try these jet pumps and print them, please let me know how you make out. I'd be really curious. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next project. We're done? Signing off. Okay. This has been one year. <laughs> Great. A year in the life of Andrew. To be continued. To be continued. How does it look? It's dry.